Now at five, this month marks the one year anniversary of the tornado that destroyed homes in Lewin. How families are recovering straight ahead. Plus, authorities in Michigan are investigating a shooting that injured two kids on Saturday that's coming up. Well, the rain is back and so is Father's Day. Everything you need to know about the week ahead and watching the tropics coming up. Your News at 5 starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 5. Good evening and thank you for joining us for your News at 5. I'm Trey Howard. Well, home in Petal is being deemed a total loss after an early morning fire. The Macedonia Fire Department tells us it happened shortly after 4.30 a.m. on Lakeland Circle in the Pecan Lakes subdivision. Upon arrival, the home was fully engulfed in flames and the roof had already collapsed. Nobody was home at the time of the fire and no injuries have been reported. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Well, the Jasper County family has new digs after losing their home in last year's deadly tornado. 150 mile winds made the twister the strongest to touch down in Mississippi in the month of June in more than 66 years. But now Derry and Jesse Pierce are starting a new chapter. Last week, the couple moved into their new home in Jasper County, and they say they're still adjusting to their new space. To have this type of space, I was telling my wife a couple of days ago, uh, I was like, wow, I got to walk all the way over there. Now, to just go get a hand towel, you know, we were putting things up and organizing the bathroom, so we wanted to put the hand towel in there. I said, man, that's a long way. <laughs> that's a long way. But we, haven't, we haven't felt that in a while. Ten, we'll hear more from the couple about their recovery one year later. Turning now over to weather, Nick, it's been a pretty wet Father's Day out here so far. A wet Father's Day indeed. You know, I have to say that uh, we're fortunate where we don't have to worry about any tornadoes on this anniversary. You know, normally we're done with tornadoes this time of year. And even if something did happen June, July, August, it's normally associated with like a tropical system. They're very weak and short lived. But in the meantime, let's talk about Father's Day here. You can see some rain falling on the Walt Massey Ford camera there in Columbia. Of course, they're at 77 degrees. We have long peaked on our rainfall, our long peaked on our temperatures for today. And as those clouds continue, continued to roll in and the rain started to fall, we kind of leveled off and now have started to drop on our temperatures here in the area. 77 with thir two thirds of an inch of rain there in Marion County. However, a different story for Waynesboro. They really haven't seen much rain at all, but that will change as some of those showers and thunderstorms continue to move into the area. And here's what I'm talking about. You can see that big influx of tropical moisture moving into our area and how it's going to affect our rain chances for the next few days. So stay tuned. All right, thanks a lot, Nick. Well, today also wraps up a holiday weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the dads in the Pine Belt. In Hattiesburg, families spent the holiday making a splash at Serengeti Springs. Folks traveled from near and far for family dinner, all to celebrate the contributions from the men in their lives. Although everyone was excited to celebrate the holiday, one father says there's still more work to do. Father's Day is the number 20th ranked holiday in the world. I think it would be great if all fathers would improve and get our numbers up. Halloween is number six. We need to get above Halloween. At 10, we'll hear more about what Father's Day means to families in the Pine Belt. And looking ahead, if you're looking for something to do to celebrate Juneteenth, look no further. The Ray E. Foundation is hosting a fireworks show, and it will be this Wednesday at Vernon Damer Park. Organizers tell us that it will begin at 8 p.m. For more information, you can head over to their website on your screen. Well, police in Round Rock, Texas are looking for suspects after two people were killed and multiple were injured in a shooting at a Juneteenth celebration on Saturday night. Officials said the shooting began just before 11 p.m. at Old Settlers Park after a fight broke out between two groups who were at the event. Two people died from the incident, while four adults and two kids suffered potentially serious injuries and were taken to area hospitals. According to the police, the victims were not a part of the fight. The unfortunate part is that we had innocent victims as a result of this reckless um, actions of uh, certain subjects. And we're here to celebrate Juneteenth, and the unfortunate part is these folks could care less about someone's life and took someone's life and. and on a day we're here to celebrate community. The suspects in the shooting are believed to have left the scene and the search is ongoing. Police say they are looking 
for a motive after at least nine people were shot in what appears to be a random shooting that sent panicked families fleeing a crowded recreation area in Rochester Hills, Michigan, Saturday afternoon. The victims include small children and the suspect, a 42 year old man, was found dead with an apparent self inflicted gunshot wound at a nearby home. Rob Kirkpatrick has the latest. An investigation is underway after a mass shooting at a splash pad in Rochester Hills, Michigan, left at least nine people wounded. We were sitting out on the patio and uh, we heard, um, like, sh we heard, we thought it was firecrackers and it was, um, I guess it was gunshots because we, because we heard people screaming, like, help us, help us. An eight-year-old boy and his four-year-old brother are among the victims. Six others were in stable condition Saturday night, according to authorities. Police say this shooting appears to be random and are trying to determine a motive. The individual pulled up, exited a vehicle, approached the splash pad, opened fire, reloaded, opened fire, reloaded, left. Police have identified the gunman as 42-year-old Michael William Nash and say he had no prior criminal history. He was found dead with a self-inflicted gunshot wound at his home nearby. The shooting comes at a time when the community is still recovering from another mass shooting just 15 miles away three years ago at Oxford High School. You don't think it will happen in your neighborhood. And you think about Oxford, I think about Oxford and all the, the tragedy that happened up here. Now this is our tragedy here in Rochester Hills. Under no circumstances is it normal for ice cream cones and, and flip flops to be strewn amongst blood and, and bullet casings. According to the Gun Violence Archive, around 220 mass shootings have happened so far in the U.S. this year. I'm Rob Kirkpatrick reporting. Across the world, there are new developments in the Israel-Hamas war. The Israeli military says it has started a daily tactical pause in one part of southern Gaza to allow more aid to reach Palestinians. But the military says the fighting in Rafah continues. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund global spokesperson talks about what this means for them. There's nothing normal at all about children living in a constant state of fear. So it does come back to those people with the decision making power on a ceasefire. They have to become more connected to the suffering of children and civilians here. The IDF says the pause will run from 8 a.m. local time until 7 p.m. local time every day until further notice. Vice President Kamala Harris met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky at a peace summit in Switzerland on Sunday, Saturday. More than 100 countries and organizations attended the conference dedicated to setting out a path toward peace between Ukraine and Russia. However, Delegation, no delegation from Russia's capital attended the meeting. Zelensky is aiming to gather support for the 10 point peace plan he first outlined late in 2022. He said he hopes for just peace to be established as soon as possible. During the conference, Harris announced an aid package of more than $1.5 billion to help Ukraine rebuild its battered energy infrastructure. Tonight, a mom is fighting to make sure her daughter's death is counted when they new safety standards are set in place for infant sleep products. If incidents that say, hey, someone died in it or someone was found in it are not enough to at least review, that's frightening. How children's injuries and deaths are tallied after products are already on the market as we get an inside look at a special committee working on safety standards coming up at 10. Florida is recovering from heavy rainfall that led to flooding. After the break, we'll see how the floods impacted their vehicles. Stay with us. Speaking of rain, we've got rain in our future and we're watching the tropics, so make sure to stick with us. I'll have everything you need to know about the week ahead on the flip side.